Hello. Hey, everyone. Welcome to our humble hour. home. Or that. Yeah. Because <laughs> we actually live here. We do live here. It's this is our home. It's super cozy. That's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm like. Ah, I'm just gonna wear my socks, my Star Wars socks. I'm just gonna. Just gonna lean back, chill a little bit, fucking answer yeah, some nice questions. Hot fire and shit. In the Got this nice hot fire. It's super hot, man. Yeah. Like, mm, 4K hotness. 4K hotness. If anyone saw the s'mores on my Twitter earlier, I actually made them right here. On that. Right here. Yep. Right here. Yep. Uh, what's up, everybody? How's it going? It's funny because it, I do say it's like, yeah, we live here, but we're, we're like terrified to exist in this space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never ever come out here. <laughs> because it's like, oh shit, I don't want to touch anything. Yeah. We're going to have to use it for a show, so we leave it. Like, we got this big fucking TV that we used way more when we were building than we're using now. Yeah, we actually used it when, when uh, we were building, when yeah. stuff, yeah, when things were happening. Now I need to fix that. never turned on. The thing is, though, we, go, we, we stream almost till midnight every fucking night, so... Onila, thank you for that three-month sub with Twitch Prime. Thank, thank you for thank that, you. Onila. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we need to... Start Actually using this TV and, or, or just like play games together in this house. Yeah. But how could we do that? Wait, yeah. How could we <laughs> fucking do that? We've literally not played any video games in this house, like other than you played a little bit of Final Fantasy that one yeah, night. Yeah, and that was like it. Just to hour. see what it looked like on the PS4 Pro. That yeah. was it. Uh, on this TV. Malika's food smells really good. Real good. Malika's making beans and rice, which sounds not that great, but it's delicious. It smells like. Delicious meat because it's seasoned. It's a curry. Yeah. Is that Bye. curry? You out? Yeah. What? So you just turn you things just on and turn, leave? Hey man, can you can you hit cool. the button right here and bring up our alerts? Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Not going home yet, man. Oh man. Not at all. Uh. Hey, in these resubs. Boop boop. All right. Thank you, Blue, Blue Banded B. Excited to support like Hyper RPG into 2017. Thank you. That's rad. These resubs are getting our sub number up. If we have enough yeah, people log good. in and resub, we might hit that 1850 and do a big giveaway. That'd be awesome. Because the thing is, those like Twitch Prime ones really fuck with stuff. They really fuck with stuff. Durhawk1, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Another you. Another Twitch Prime resub. God damn it. Don't, don't. Where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Kaiju's about to Kaiju break the stream. Kaiju just somehow threw something at Lucas. Wow, these are really coming in. Mm hmm. Yep. Kenazo, thank you. No, I might have to reload it. Oh, there it is. And Mazuken. Mazuken, wow. thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, we're gonna answer you guys' questions, talk, hang out, chill. Malika's gonna probably bring some food in a little bit. This is now very close to it just being like. Yeah, this feels our like place. relaxing time. Like right our now. place. Even though we have. Lucas just left. <laughs> four, four cameras. Oh, there's two giant TVs with chat rooms on them. There's a speaker, a couple tablets. There's a computer over there with alerts. We've got a viewing monitor. We've got a computer monitor down here for if we need it. We've got the 4K TV behind us. Only seven lights turned on currently. Yeah, an array of lights. It's really comfortable. <laughs> it's, it's really funny it's how really comfortable. that has become comfortable. Like, that's our definition of comfortable now. Well, it's good there's no people around. Yeah. Redo 50, thank you for that resub. Yeah, thank you for that. It's when when all the people leave, it's kind of nice, like... Yeah. I mean, Denova's still here working on some code, but we'll, we'll let it slide. Well, he's just like... Uh, he's chilling he's in the just back, always working here. on some code. He's here all the time um, now. It's but great. it still kind of feels like, all right, cool, everybody's left, the house is... It was actually a really chill day, though. Yeah. If Dustin wasn't here today, Lucas was just trying to book talent, but Lucas made a fire outside and sat outside all day until it started raining. Yeah. Uh, start just raining trying to book, again. book guests um, for the next couple weeks because booking talent is takes a lot of time. Tell us what you're eating, Zargras. I ate things today. Never again. Some things should not be consumed. Damn you, McDonald's. I should have went for foe. Yes, you should have. McDonald's is never really a good choice. Never a good idea. Not a good choice. Should have gone for pho. Yeah. For sure. Um, I think Genova Plus asked, my room is kind of mostly set up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I walked in the other day and it looks like you got your recording desk built and getting that set up. Yeah. And you, you told me, and I'm going to say it out loud so it puts you on the spot, that we're going to have the new Star Wars opening theme song by Friday. Yeah, it sounds pretty good so far. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out so that everybody's like, Alex, where's the song? 
Uh, no, it'll be so the, the, really. the song you guys yeah. heard last Friday, the whole title crawl thing, um, was just something we got off a royalty free site that apparently wasn't actually <laughs> wasn't royalty free. Because <laughs> it got flagged for copyright on YouTube, so we don't get any monetization off that video, which hurts because yeah. fifty cents goes a long way. Speaking of which, someone asked how the electric bill is. It's not bad. You see, uh, I learn. I've been doing this for a while, and I've learned how to manage using equipment that puts the highest output at the least amount of power. Honestly, that popcorn machine, when we're turning it on, probably uses the most power out of everything we use. <laughs> yeah. The heater on that's probably the most, the most uh, powerful thing. Everything else in this place is LED, uh, which is drawing very little wattage. Very, very little wattage. Yeah. We only have 15 amp fuses in this fucking house, so we can't draw much. Yeah, all these lights above us are LED, right? Oh yeah, every one yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I stopped using tons in a while back. Um, Zach, did you sort out your new capture card? Did the new capture card sort out the tech issues? Asked Blue Banded B. Um, yes and no. One of the cards is fucking phenomenal. Fucking phenomenal. It's a 4 SDI capture card. So we've been inputting four different SDI inputs on it, and it's it's great. Um, the HDMI capture card, only one input will be accepted at once, and it's a two input card. And then we've got a USB 3.0 HDMI capture card that works too, but sometimes one will work and not the other. It's a Wirecast issue. We know it's a Wirecast issue. We've sent tons of like reports and stuff. It doesn't fucking matter. It's not like they're gonna fix it. Uh, nobody does what we do, so nobody runs into these fucking problems. Because uh, we can open up the exact same source and direct show, works great, it shows up just fine, you open it in Wirecast and it's just a question mark and acts like something's wrong, but it's fine, it's just, it's a Wirecast issue. To put it in layman's terms, we're way too good for Wirecast and like anything else. Pork chop! 37! Look at that, we're up to 1849 nice. from the resubs coming in. Wow. Holy shit. This, this is amazing. amazing. We are one subscriber away from giving away a Hyper RPG loot box. It's gonna be filled with, uh, goodies. Hyper RPG goodies, some yeah. board games, uh, some toys, comic books, whatever Emily's got her hands on at the moment. Um, Popcorn machine was successfully retrieved, yes. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, 10 um, months. There we go. Belly button. Oh, belly button. Hey, Resub. belly button. I don't know if that'll do it. So the thing is, some resubs don't count. Well, there's another one. Towards the total. Eth. Then and B. <laughs> it only really works if it's like you haven't resubbed in a long time and it doesn't count it anymore. Mm. If you're like on the money, it keeps it in the system and thinks you're still subscribed uh -huh. and it kind of like right. holds it down. So we'll see when it flips over. When it makes that flip, we'll do a giveaway. So it's close. Now, now it's kind of fun because it's like resub, watch. Is it going to happen? Is it gonna ha oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> a train of train of thought interrupted. Oh, damn. Have I gotten to the point where Zach is trained like Pavlov's dog? Mm -hmm. Right? His mouth oh, yeah. starts wandering. It is. It oh, yeah. is. Right? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Radishes. and Look, look. this is a healthy meal. Mine is more pretty. Mm. Money. I Ooh. better jump into this. I had a company pub run and then had swish swish which made me Ooh. Hey, I mean, you can't. Thank you, Lady Kaku. Thank you, Lady Kaku, and you can't go wrong with Swish Swish. Swish Swish is really good. You know, like the eggs. Swish Swish, it's good shit. Mine's prettier. No, mine's prettier. Yours has death on it. Cheese and tomatoes. Yeah, death. <laughs> it's got death all over it. I mine's just got radishes. I'd say that tomatoes would make it prettier. No, no. Not cheese, but tomatoes. I don't know, this cheese though, the white kind, pretty good. Zach, you are so spoiled, dude. Kind of I am. It's true. It's very true. What's he doing? Oh, yeah, he's eating the uh, he's eating package. The bag, mm. the bag of treats. Not the bag of treats, but the, the bag treats, itself. Mm. But the bag. Babe, this is really good. I know. It's not bad for poor people food. <laughs> poor Man, people food. Malika makes the best poor people food. She says poor people food. I had peanut butter and jelly this morning. I mean, cool. That Wait, was no, breakfast. But without jelly. Actually, I just had peanut butter on bread. That was my poor people food this morning. Yeah. Because I don't have any jelly right now. <laughs> I was joking with Lucas this morning. 
because put that on my list. We've had a lot of people ask, like, wanting to pitch us shows, like a lot. Mm. So many people pitching us shows. You're cooking for poor people. Well, no, but it's like, you know, you know, like we've been doing this for a long time, and one of our goals is always to make things look as good as possible well, on a very low budget. Money, yeah. Like my poor people. Right. Um, because I'm very, but that just means extra work and being very particular. But people come in and they see our setup and they think that we have a lot of funds. And it's like, no, that's not how this works. Speaking of which, let's adapt. I didn't pay for this 4K TV. No. I can't afford a 4K Cinnabunny TV. Cinnabunny 40. Thank you for the follow. Um, no, we were kind of forced to get the 4K TV because the other one was per- was taken back because we were borrowing oh, that's it. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I hunt. Amazon deals like nobody's business and Craigslist, and Craigslist. Uh, we Malika and I both have Craigslist free alerts on our phone uh, I just don't ever go to those sites so I don't buy anything I, don't I mean I anything. have to because I have to get stuff for the studio so I'll yeah, put stuff different. like on certain lists and wait for it to be refurbished wait for it to get like a warehouse deal with the, like damaged packaging I don't yeah. buy fucking anything new fuck that yeah if I can get something, like Amazon is great because I can get something at a huge discount and a warehouse deal where it's like, oh, there's a scratch on it. I don't give a shit. I'll take a scratch. Yeah. Fuck that. I'll take a scratch if it's 30% off or 35% off. And because it's Amazon, when it gets in, if it doesn't work, I just send it back. 1850. Nice. We All did right. it. Giveaway time. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. We got to do a giveaway. Do Malika's going to pull All a right. winner. Guys, get active in the chat. Uh, we're gonna do a physical giveaway. We'll send you a box of Hyper RPG goodies. Speaking of things that cost money, yeah. <laughs> physical giveaways. It's one of those things I say, like, let's do it! <laughs> and then Emily's gonna send me a bill at the end of the month and be like, what the fuck is this? And she's like, it's postage for this month. I'm like, oh, god damn it. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. Why? Chat looks like they really want this giveaway. Yeah, man. Well, it's the first time, it's been months. Since we hit one of these. Oh. Uh, because in October? Yeah, it was September, like end of September when they announced Twitch Prime, we jumped up to 1800. And that was the last time we did a, like, a 50 goal giveaway. Because once we hit a certain level, we don't do a 50 goal giveaway until we hit the next, next one. Right. And 1850 was that next one. So hell yeah! And it's hard to keep hitting the new ones when all the Twitch Prime subs just disappear. <laughs> drop constantly. <laughs> when every the Twitch month. Prime ones disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! It's tough. Tough. But thank you everyone tonight so far for resubbing with Twitch Prime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very, very helpful. Keeps we are now going. at the highest amount of subscribers we have ever had. Wow. Let's keep it chugging. Only 150 subscribers away yeah, from our Batman theme one. Just Dance. You're in on that. Oh, am I? <laughs> what am I doing for that? Tell me. Guys, what do you want Alex to? He just oh, opened God, the floor. No, 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 what do you no, want no. Alex to no. be in the Batman themed? Uh, <laughs> in the Batman themed, Just Dance. That was a bad idea. I should have shut up. Cover port. Cover port. All right. Cover port. Congratulations. Congrats, Cover port. Congratulations. You Thank won you. A lot of stuff, I guess. Oh, Mr. Freeze. That one I can get in on. Or Penguin. <laughs> Lucas is already Harley, so... Mm-hmm. Oh, Alfred. Yo, Alfred like, was... Alfred like was Alfred. kind of a piece of shit in the, uh, the Batman Telltale game. Dude! Oh, really? What? The Riddler? <laughs> uh, um, so... Oh, lots of Riddlers. Getting back to... I'm gonna get into Discord in just a sec. Uh, thank you guys for getting us to 1850. Every five subscribers, we give away a Steam key. Um, we haven't had a new subscriber yet. These are all just resubs. That's yeah. super awesome. So, uh, every new, new subscriber, subscriber be good too. We, get, we give away, uh, every five we give away a Steam key. My girlfriend says Catwoman. Nobody's claimed Catwoman yet. Selena Kyle? You wanna go with Selena Kyle? <laughs> Nobody's claimed it. Do you want it? <laughs> that's probably You the, can have it if you want. That's probably the last one. <laughs> Thank you. You, 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 you have it. You you get it. We'll give it to you. So, uh, Alex will go as Catwoman during the, uh, the Just Dance Batman. I actually have a black bodysuit. <laughs> you know what? Like anything that makes me not actually have to put in any effort whatsoever. Mm-hmm. 
kind of okay with that. I got a black bodysuit. As I Alicia bet Malika's Silverstone, got, like, some little some little cat ears. Alicia You're Silverstone, done. Batgirl's another possibility. Uh, Alicia Alex Stone. Oh yeah, this is a good question. Thank you, O'Neal. Why do you have a black bodysuit? Uh, and yeah, I don't uh, for, have for Beyond it. Zach last year. <laughs> for what? Beyond <laughs> Zach. Beyonce? Beyonce Zach. No, for for all the single ladies. I missed that, and I'm incredibly happy. You should look it up. It's uh, it's, no, no, it's very not, not revealing. I'm not gonna look that up at all. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Why well, you think it was gross? <laughs> you shaming me? Malika's now body shaming Zach. You, you body shaming me, Malika? <laughs> the, uh, what was it? Taped up back zipper was unflattering. Speaking of which, actually, whoever said I don't have the hips for it. Come on. <laughs> uh, well, now you've got to do it to prove them wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, God. Sounds a little... You should dress up as, um, what's your name? You know the old cat woman with the bob that's flipped out? From the TV show? Mm. She's so adorable. Do you know what I'm talking about, Zach? Come on, nerd power. Nerd trivia. Who are you? Wait, what? I was getting into Discord. What'd you say? I was saying that Alex should dress up as the Catwoman with, from the TV show with the hair that's flipped out. What's her name? Oh, Zai, I'm pretty sure Hector and I the did Catwoman? Careless Whisper back in the day. Like the old Catwoman? Oh, I don't, rem I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. So that. Cute. Let me show you a picture. Okay, so for the 12-month resubs, it hasn't been a year yet. We got our sub button a year ago, but the stream went live on February 28th. And we actually have a call with the Halo Foundation tomorrow to talk about a one year oh. anniversary stream that is a charity drive for the Halo Foundation again. Yeah. Because we want to do that. We want to make that a yearly thing. It was really, really amazing to support them. Uh, thank you for that reset. Soul Sight, thank you. It was really amazing to support them last year, and we did so much by getting them that money. Like, literally, like, provided for homes the entire year. That's amazing. That, that, that charity drive we did last year directly fed so many mouths, and it's, it's a pretty awesome thing, so we're really excited to do that again. Um, <clears throat> so, let's get into the Discord questions, because for those that might not know, this is Honesty Hour. This is a chance for you guys to talk to us, ask us questions. Oh, yeah. I remember. What, and we will answer them to the best of our ability. These questions can be about the channel, they can be about ourselves, uh, things that are going on in your life, and our life. Yeah. You know. Um, thank you, 13 Modem, for that reso for 12 months. Anything you want to ask at all, except for things that we can't talk about on stream. Yeah. So, uh, and... Julie, let's, let's, okay. let's just get into it. So, Alien Editor says, Zach, how badly do you think you're going to do if you compete in the XCOM tournament you mentioned to Iffy? Um, I like that you asked that at 4.27 p.m. today after you'd watched me play it for three hours, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kaiju. Special guest star of Honesty Hour. Chewing on the tail. Okay, so. Uh, I'm gonna practice on stream, as you know. Already, I played a couple matches during Shadowrun to see how I was doing after we took it off fucking hard mod mode, and really good. So I'll get better, and I'm gonna kick some ass. Mazukin says, Zach, I love pencils and parsecs last week. What are your thoughts after the first episode? Which characters captured your interest the most, and why is it CZ? Well, it is CZ, obviously. And we had a really good meeting with, um, with we had a really good meeting with the cast after the show um, about where we think it should go, expectations, all that stuff. And as you guys know, with any new RPG we do on this channel, um, if we haven't had a chance to workshop it and it's the first time that group has gotten together to play, which it was, they'd never played together until that moment, it's going to take some time to find that rhythm that they need for their show. So we had a good conversation with the cast. Um, you know, one of the big things that we're going to kind of ask them to do uh, for the show is to do a lot more RPing in character, less out of character exposition and describing the actions and more in character just doing the actions. Um, working with Bert to, Bert has written an amazing story for the show, like an amazing story. And I, it's his first time GMing on camera so we want to work with him with getting comfortable, playing characters um, and kind of expanding that world a little bit and getting into NPC roles and things like that. So we're working on it. 
Uh, for our first episode, I think they did a pretty good job. Pillow Zach's been working on the tech, said that we should have it ready by Friday. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, Indeed. Zach, is season two of Vanquish going to be completely standalone, or do you expect some references from season one to be made? I'd like to follow continuity, if needed, and avoid spoilers. I'm two-thirds of the way through season one, and just want to know if I should make an effort to finish before you start season two. Um, watching season one will not be necessary to enjoy season two, but it will have callbacks to season one, because I will not be able to not do that. Uh, but it will be much more in line with the Valiant Universe. We did some stuff in season one, that was just kind of saying, let's see how far we can push this. Fuck it. Um, and season two, we're going to be working closer with Valiant to stay more in tune with current events. That's all I'll say. Because the rest is being worked out. No, I see you sniffing. Shit. Good. Uh, hey Zach, what is this new gambling thing that Cookie keeps throwing into chat and confusing us with? Okay. <laughs> so, Streamlabs put out a new loyalty program. Some of you may have noticed when you go to tip to the channel and, uh, start... When you go to tip the channel, there's like a loyalty button now for the channel. So Streamlabs has released this new loyalty program that's kind of like Revlo, and he was testing it out today to see if we like it better than Revlo since we use Streamlabs for everything else. It'd be nice to have a one, a one-stop shop. Somebody here? Someone's here. That's really strange. A special guest star? No. Food? What? Did, I... Did you order food? I didn't order. F I wish I ordered food. Is it food? I'm fucking starving. Did someone order food? Did someone order food? Congratulations! Somebody ordered Postmates. <gasps> Are you serious? They ordered what? Postmates. Is that food for us to eat? I, I think so. Hey, Denova, did you order food? Nope. Somebody ordered us food. Someone ordered us food, really? What? What is this Whoever food you speak us of? Food. You Thank you so much. Food. What is it? Oh my god, yes. What is this? Maybe it's just marshmallows. <laughs> that, oh. Kaiju, not for you. Anything. He's like, not for dogs. Yeah, somebody <laughs> ordered food for Kaiju. He's like, what is this? I just, yeah, it probably is I, containers I of dog food. How random. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and very appreciated. Yeah, who has the studio address? <laughs> Arislin? Possibly. Do you think maybe we just got delivered food we weren't supposed to have? Yeah, it's very strange food. It's maybe. edamame. Um, <laughs> Was this a wrong address deliver? Uh, I hope so. It, it's some broth. <laughs> what, broth? Are you fucking kidding? Yeah, it's just Why? broth. And then I think what is... this is... Hey. Oh shit, that was close. Here. Get out of here. here. I'll take that. And... Oh, it's ramen. It's one order I'll of ramen take it. and edamame. That's totally not that's for us. Is that for us? Sounds I don't, if someone fine. doesn't like fess up in the audience. Oh, that looks really good. It has oh my belly. fucking oh, god, god, it's got pork belly oh. in it. I know. Oh, oh, it smells really good. So good thing like, you already you already have food there, Zach. Hey, you your food's have a, great. My food's great. Yeah. Like, screw the poor people food. I'll eat some of that edamame though. If mm -hmm. someone doesn't fess up in the chat, I think we just got accidentally delivered someone else's <laughs> food. <laughs> there was no receipt in that bag. <laughs> whoever, yeah, whoever it is, it was I'm like this guy had a now. smile on his face. Oh wait, Lucas is calling me. Oh. Yeah. Did you order food and then leave? <laughs> it's totally Lucas's, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Yeah, they did deliver it here. <laughs> Come on! No! He just left too. No! He probably just got home. No! no. Oh, that's hilarious. Damn what? it, Lucas! <laughs> what? Um, Lucas wants that to be thrown in the fridge, Alex. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh, I hate you, Lucas. <laughs> that was like the greatest surprise. Uh, you should definitely get them to give you a refund for fucking that one up. Yeah. We'll, uh, all right, we'll put it in the fridge. <laughs> Bye. That was, that was the worst. That, guess where that got delivered from? What? Where? All the way from Silver Lake Ramen. What? what? Wow. Wow. So he said they he's got the receipt and it was supposed to be delivered to his Koreatown <laughs> address, but they drove it all the way up here because it was like a past address on file. <laughs> Thank you, Kaltoro, for clipping that. <laughs> and, and Maker. <laughs> So God. that's Lucas's dinner that was supposed to be delivered to his home address and got instead <sighs> delivered way the fuck far away. <laughs> if he had called like five minutes later, that would have been completely gone. It was great because it was right when you were about to <laughs> take a bite. I just got the, the silverware out. <laughs> oh, or plasticware, oh, whatever. Man. <laughs> well, that Lucas was... doesn't have dinner at all, though. <laughs> he ordered food and they delivered it at the wrong place. What great comedic timing that was. All right. Yeah, this thing of fruit snacks wasn't all that filling. Yeah. Both Alex and Lucas are getting trolled on this one, for sure. Yeah, that was a double troll. Yep. Well done, Postmates. Well done. Hey, Malika. Yeah? Were there mashed potatoes or something left over in there that Zach's never going to eat? Is that true? Yeah, you want to eat it? Yes. Zach, Zach you don't, you're not interested in that, right? I'm eating this shit right now. It's delicious. Okay. You okay. Want, you want barbecue chicken and mashed potatoes, I, and I have one roast carrot. I think I ate the chicken last night. You I didn't make her. chicken? Because you told me to. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, whatever else is there. <laughs> Thank you, Malika. You're welcome. Um, okay, so Good night, basically Maker. getting back to the point about Streamlabs, we are trying to test out a system where it's only one system in the chat room and not like all these other things. So we're testing it out today. We'll see how it goes. We also test out the new cup that Streamlabs put out that collects not just bits, but like subs and resubs and everything else. It was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, Alakis wants to know if we're trying to keep Kaiju out of the streamed areas or does he get to be free to do what he wants? Kaiju thinks he's free to do whatever he wants and he sure as fuck acts he's like He's pretty it. much free to do whatever he wants. But we're constantly having to grab him and put him away. <laughs> yeah. Especially when new people show up. Kaiju's a nice dog, but he gets really excited when new people show up. And because he's a Shiba, he's really good at... He tests boundaries. He wants to know what the fuck he can get away with. And when new people come in, he immediately lets them know... Hey, thanks for the bits! <laughs> he immediately lets them know that he's the boss, or waiting to see if they'll tell him to stop, and he just jumps on people, yeah. bites at their hands, bites at their clothes, and stuff like that. He keeps untying people's shoes recently. That's a new thing he's doing. He did, he's done that to me since I met him. He'll never do that shit to Malik and I, but the second someone new comes in, he's just like, what can I get away with? He so, thinks I'm new like every day. If I come out of my room and he sees me, he comes and jumps on me and acts like I'm a brand new playmate. Yeah. I have food, I just... I'm here right now, sitting, talking to you. Okay, so Zarkos asks, What are your favorite things related to the channel and the show's post-expansion? And, mm. and the most frustrating slash upsetting things. Favorite thing is we got a lot of new people coming through, and we have some amazing new shows. Like, everything kind of got turned up a notch. Like, the out crowd, great. Um... Shadowrun and DFA are going to continue being amazing, and we've got a thing starting with Zombie Orpheus on Saturdays very soon. So that's like, bam, new shit in the Seattle zone. Um, and then the stuff down here, like launching new shows, putting Chris on the gauntlet. Perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. Star Wars and getting Vanquish Season 2 ready. Like, these are all things that are really, really great and really exciting and get make me happy because it's like we're taking things to the next level that we need to. Uh, definitely need to. We still need the audience to show up, but we're working on yeah. that. We're working on that. We don't have that like brand recognition yet, which is very hard to get right now. And apparently, like, uh, you're saying the Zach Eubank brand isn't 
Isn't it Codenames? Saying the Hyper RPG brand. Uh, Denova and Malika have been working on SEO on the website, and surprisingly to them, like Hyper RPG in itself isn't what people are coming for. Like, it's some of the other stuff that's on the channel that's. Uh, Demalion, thank you for that. Thank you for the thank bits. You. Um, so we really need to work on our brand recognition, which is difficult because that's a cost. Marketing's a cost. Getting the word out is a fucking cost. Uh, and right now, our biggest concern, Thank you. our biggest concern is just getting things up and running and getting the shows to a place that they operate. So that means we don't have money left over to do things like marketing, to do things like getting the word out, which are extremely important for a, a, a young startup trying to do really big stuff. Yeah. Uh, but right now, getting the shows off the ground is the most important part. The most upsetting part for me has been uh, tech issues and little problems here and there. I have extremely high standards, as you guys know, and when there's problems on shows, it stresses me out a lot um, because I know how quickly we lose viewers. What? Like, I <laughs> It's, it's, it's weird that we have a different standard that we have to live up to, but we do, and it's strange. Like, if you're a well-known streamer who's been doing it for years, and this is no, no like, no insult on them whatsoever, because they, they've built their different business model than us, but you have a different... You have different ways that you can interact with that world on Twitch and, and the way, like, if you tune into somebody who's an, a streamer that's been around for a really long time and they have a really big audience already, you don't have to innovate like we do. No. And you get certain, if you're recognized, you can get away with certain things. You can have audio issues or whatever, or, you know, like, you, you can just get away with it. And you can also not even try to have, like, really big, crazy shit like we do. And if you're recognized, people will... Keep watching, because celebrity, even on you know, even B level or C level celebrity on the internet goes a really long way to keeping someone tuned in. Um, and we don't have that recognition yet. We don't have that brand recognition. So, and because we put ourselves at such a high pedestal, people expect us to live up to it. They'll come in and complain about things in our shows and leave that they wouldn't complain about on someone else's channel. Like Literally if any if, other channel at all. If you're just sitting there watching someone play a game. There's so little to that, it's really hard to fuck that up from a tech standpoint. You yeah. can fuck it up, but it's hard to. It's hard to fuck it up from a tech standpoint. So you're not going to go in there and start complaining about tech. But when you're seeing a big setup like this, and you've got an RPG show, and there's all these moving pieces and all this stuff going on, and a, you're getting an audio duplication out of one of the eight fucking channels of audio that you're running into your board, people start freaking out. Because they can recognize when something's wrong, and then they expect it to be better. But when you have very little that could go wrong... They don't recognize it because they, they don't they don't notice it. You know, it's 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 uh, there's less to go wrong, so it doesn't. We have so many things in play at all times that it's really easy for shit to fuck up. So we also, don't, when something just looks as good as all this does, and the production is such a big thing, people just inherently expect more out of it, even if there's nothing else like it on Twitch. Yeah, I, but so it bothers those. me a lot because we get this like I see it happen, and I know this from experience. I've worked at a lot of different Twitch channels, and I've done consulting for some other channels, and we, we have different things that happen. One of the things that's really interesting is, and this, and this is what I like about what we're doing, we create super fans. The amount of people that are subscribed to Followed is great. 10% is an amazing ratio. Mm -hmm. We're almost at 10%. The amount of people who are watching on a daily basis who are subscribed, also fucking phenomenal. We create super fans here, which is amazing, and we love you guys for that. Um, but we get kind of the flip reaction from front page. We're different. We are held to a different standard. Um, people are less likely sometimes, now especially because of all the esports and the other big events, some people just assume yeah. it's sponsored content, which they're less likely to follow or subscribe to. Uh, it's harder to get the word out about that stuff, and it's different. So there's, they hold it at a different level, and we see that when we retain someone, we retain them far longer and far more intensely than other channels, but getting that person to retain, we have a very low success rate for. So, it's, it's that, it, it's great in some ways and really difficult in others. Mm -hmm. Getting the front page viewers to stick around is, oh man, it's fucking tough. 
Yeah, and people really will, fucking tough. People see the big production and think, oh, like, oh, they don't really need sub money or anything like that, obviously, because well, look at that. I have a question, because I, I got this on the Lake Division. Sometimes we have tech issues on the single streamer stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially with that setup. Um, I have a question. And then people are saying, how come single streamers in their basements can get it, but not us? Because that's not what we work to do. Hmm? That's not what we work to do. So Malik is saying, why do single streamers in their basements get the single streamer aspect and not us? Well, that's not what we work on. We do it for fun to talk to the community. I don't want to compete in a single streamer space. Yeah. Because it's filled. And there's people who are going to do it better, and that's all they do all day. So why would we even compete in that? So we focus primarily when we're doing that on connecting with the community in a unique way, less on that being our thing. Because it will never be our thing. We can't make it be our thing because there's going to be people who do it 10 to 12 hours a day and that's all they do and you can't compete with that. Um, Mr. Captain D asks, who are the sponsors for Hyper? We don't have any financial sponsors right now. Exactly. We have an in-kind sponsorship of Black Magic, which is currently the only one and we're working on a couple others. So we're working on Corsair right now. Uh, we're working on V-Real. We're working on some other things. So um, as far as financial sponsors, we have none. We have zero. Again, we don't have brand recognition. We can't expect brands to give us money when they don't know who the fuck we are. Yeah. So all that stuff has to come with growth. It's that, it's that tough balance of how do we grow? How do we bring new people in? Unfortunately, we still live in a day and age where a lot of sponsors that have money want to see numbers over super fans, which I know is incorrect. Some modern marketers know that that's also not the best way to go about things, but most people still think in that purely like high number level. And you know, we've been fortunate to work with a couple partners who've been able to see what we know is having 500 really great concurrent people is better than 2,000 trolls yeah. any fucking day of the week, so. Speaking of numbers, Sporify asked whether uh, Games Done Quick affected Hyper's numbers. No. Different audience. Yeah, different audience. Yes and no. Uh, it's interesting sometimes seeing the people who follow us, what they also watch primarily. Mm. Um, we get surprised. And that's where it's just like, you know, a large percentage of our audience, like a really large percentage of the people who follow us, spend most of their time watching Co Carnage. Mm. And you wouldn't think that there's much crossover there. But what that tells me is like people come to us for a certain type of thing, and if they want to watch somebody play a video game, they're going to go watch somebody who does that. Right. You know, like they're going to go watch him when he's playing a new game, and they're going to come watch us for an RPG. They're not going to come watch us as much for the new games and stuff. So, nah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Alka says, Frank, when do we get the tour of your office? I am sure you promised us probably. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you promised us probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Azrin, uh, yeah, 234678, just says, gay, like it's a statement. Are you, are you coming out of the closet right now? We'll support you. Fully We're here. support you. We'll fully support you in whatever kind of support you need. You have um, our, our full love and support. Yeah. Or if you just want to make out. Gay as fuck, man. Whatever you Sweet. need, man. Whatever right. you need. A whole chat room here, just for you. Just for you. Um, We're just gonna have a good day. He's gay. Happy. He's happy. He's very, very happy. happy. That's cool. <laughs> he says, sure, cool. Um, yeah, I'll, I gotta put pictures up and stuff soon. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and yes, I did see that speed run. That guy's a good player. But um, who, okay, Sam Whitwer. Why do people keep bringing up that name? Like I should know who it is. It sounds familiar. Looking it up now. I know other, it's like... White Rabbit wants to know if the uh, donation game will be a new standard for Cineverse. Oh, he's an actor. Yeah, who's he, who's he in? Star Wars voice Apparently actor he's guy. streaming. Right on. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll, we'll nice try to reach out. Hey, Voices Darth Maul. Voices Darth Maul. Oh. And Rebels. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll look into that. I mean, usually the only way to get a hold of people is to go on their fucking Twitch channel and be like, Yo! Yeah. We do shit. Um, okay. 
Uh, Alienar says, would you be okay with us setting up death pools for the RPG shows? <laughs> death pools. What do you mean by that? Uh, death pools for the RPG shows. Like, who's gonna die? Who's gonna die? I mean, we know oh. DFA, that's really likely to happen. And we know we're building out the Heroclix show where someone's gonna die every week. They just have to. Uh, yeah. Eh. Just go for it. I don't care what you... If it's community-based, just do it. Just do it. Yeah, you, totally. guys, you guys come up with the best ideas. Um, yeah, Zach doesn't actually have any good ideas, so... Yeah, none. Want... None. I never do. I don't, I don't ever have ideas at all. I just... Uh, I just hire other people to... Cut. I don't know. I don't know. I can't <laughs> afford that. It makes it sound like I have money. I don't. Well, my Jeep is stuck up in Seattle, and they sent me a... Uh, oh, it is? Yeah. I didn't even think about that. And, uh... Why do the bus? How can we drive through things? Yeah. Well, yeah, Rai, I just Rai, the Jeep existed. I was going to drive down the Jeep <laughs> later. Oh. And, uh... That would work. Man. And, um... Does it not run anymore? Well, the clutch was slipping. I thought there was just, like, some air in the line. Because the clutch was loose or just like the master cylinder need to be tightened up a little bit or something like that. They sent me a quote today. <laughs> I just don't have the money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, cool. No, just hold on to it for a little while. <laughs> you guys want to just keep it parked there for, you know, the four or five months it'll take me to is save it, up? Is it even worth the price of the quote? Yeah, but I don't have the money. <laughs> uh. So I'm just like, cool. No, you guys... Hold on to that thing, you know? Just, yeah. just, just, have, what's it cost to keep it parked there for a little while? <laughs> God damn it. God, yeah, it's just, oh, fucking shit. I hate that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty miserable. God, it's just one little problem. <laughs> one little problem. Um, Fei Long says, just finished binging all of Vanquished earlier this week and hyped for season two. That's awesome. Thank you, Fei Long. Any chance of cameo appearances from season one cast or reappearances of any surviving chat NBCs? Yes. If they're in LA for any reason, I've already told them they got to come by and try to be on the show. Um, that, that is an open door for them for sure. And uh, NPCs that survived, who will, who's to say? We'll see. We'll see. Um... Alika says, I know it's early in the season, but Cam has now had two gaming table fouls and died two out of two times. <laughs> Have you thought of giving him some one-on-one -on -one coaching? No. <laughs> no. I hope you guys got a chance to see uh, Indomitable this week, though, Monday night. It was fun. It was really fun. They got it, finally, and it was great. It was a really good time. Thank you for that follow. Thank, Thank you. Follow. Jules 12, 18. Um, it was a really good time. Scott Porter, it was really cute, actually. Because <laughs> Scott was like, he just kind of hung out after the show and kept trying to pitch himself to us. Mm. And we're like, no, you can come on anytime. And he was like, I mean, do you have like, do you have somebody for two weeks from now? Would that be too, I don't want to invite myself, but would that be too soon for me to come <laughs> back? Awesome. Can I come back in two weeks? Like, is that too soon? It's like, dude, you are literally welcome anytime you want to be on the show. Just anytime, man. Yeah, and he started then pitching us ideas. He's like, I, you know, I got this idea for how we could like level up characters if they survive. And I've got this thing I've done in the past. Like, he was great. He's awesome. amazing. He, he had a really good time. Uh... You had a really good time. Ozai75 says, uh, Zach, it seems that Tuesdays and Thursdays are very different in tone in comparison to the other days of the week, content-wise. Do you already have plans for other flagship slash temple shows those days to complement Gauntlet, Cineverse, or are you satisfied with the current lineup as is? Thursday, there will be a temple show, but I can't announce it yet. It's secret. And, as you guys know, part of the reason we've never launched anything on Thursday nights is there's that whole other juggernaut that we share 90% of our fucking audience with. <laughs> and anytime yeah. we do anything, you all act like you're watching us, but we can tell from chat analytics that there's really only 30 people watching and 100 people just leaving their browsers open. Um, so, we don't <laughs> spend money on Thursday nights unless we have something really, really big and special. And we do. But we're not launching it until March, so you're just going to have to stick around and... 
and check it out. Yeah. You know, hopefully we grow big enough one day that it's not... Hey, thank you. It's uh, Novik. Thank you for that follow. Hopefully we grow big enough one day where we don't have to worry about that shit. <laughs> we don't have to worry about that shit. Um, uh, yeah, and as Thursday, far as, I never heard of it. Yeah. And as far as Tuesdays are concerned, our goal for the next month is to release a gaming talk show similar to Cineverse, but gaming, gaming news related, and we're currently casting that out. Uh, we have a couple leads and stuff like that, but we wanted to get Cineverse tight first and get Cineverse back to where it needs to be because we really like that show and it deserves to be getting more views back to where it was when we first grabbed it. So we wanted to get that locked down first and then we'll be launching a gaming news show. Uh, so that'll be like our talk show night, which I think works. It's fine. You know, yeah. it's good. Um, okay. Alana Rose says, can you please tell Kaiju from me that he is a good puppy? She you're a good, you're, you're a, a good puppy. You're, you're a decent puppy there, dog. You're a good puppy, Kaiju. Come here. Oh, there he goes. Come that, here. He, that water is just going to get lost in no time. That's fine. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, the sound you're hearing in the background is the fire. This is what happens when you've got a fire. Yeah. It's the sound of the fire. Um, yeah, Camerant was a great segment, and we're going to be working on more things like that. You're an adequate puppy. Very adequate. Adequate puppy. Um, I'm having some health issues, and I've been watching VODs to get through it all. All the little kaiju moments are just adorable, even when he is being a naughty puppy. Someone naughty likes puppy, you even what? when you're naughty! Someone likes you when you're a little piece of shit! Holy mother's love. Such a puppy. Uh, Hardliner says, Zach, have you or others done streams thanking people for the stuff they have bought on the wish list? Yes, we have, and we've done periscopes too. And we name stuff after the things people buy and all that good stuff. So, yes. The microwave says Ace V on it permanently. It's Lord Ace V yeah. uh, that heats all of our food. Yep. Yep. This is really fantastic. Thank you, Ace V. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone who buys stuff gets it named after them permanently, so, uh, and thanked however they can be thanked. Um, Torgaff says, you had mentioned some of your thoughts in the intro to Pencils and Parsecs YouTube video. Any additional thoughts, comments about the premiere? Viewing figures, contribution engagement, changes possibly, positives. Um, so we talked about it a little bit already tonight. I know that once we get the system down the way it's supposed to work the way we tested it it's going to increase um engagement a lot because it's super cool to see it moving in real time and the light shifting in real time like it's really fucking cool yeah, it's really um awesome. and before long we're going to be releasing a plugin that you guys can install at home if you have hue lights in your home you could open this browser uh plugin and the lights will change with <laughs> that is what's amazing. happening on camera like that'd be so crazy cool. um so you can be like kind of in the zone with it yeah uh, i know that when that's done that's gonna help a lot um that's like the most interactive thing i've ever heard of <laughs> that's um, that's yeah. so cool. cool everyone yeah everyone thinks that's amazing um and We'll have the other tech issues figured out. I mean, I wasn't here last week, and I was really upset with myself for not being. Not to say that the guys here aren't capable. It's just I still have a lot to teach them, and um, I need to. It, it's tough. I wish I could be in two places at once just to, to knock that stuff out. Because then it's my fault, and it should just be my fault. Um, and then I can help them fix it quickly. Instead, I'm like on the phone, back and forth, like. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Geica says, Zach, if there were no barriers, who would be your dream guest star for Hyper, and on what show? Hmm. Even Death. Huh? What? We could cast dead people, too? No barriers. No, 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 I would say, like, a real person. Like, like, let's, let's theorize, like, okay, who should we be shooting for? Like, who's, who would be, like, talent that we think would be great on a Hyper RPG show right now? What's I, have, the, I have a dream guest, but that's just me. What's the video. What's the name of that guy who was in... You remember the movie we saw with the blind guy? Uh, that's a lot of movies. Tommy Wiseau, everyone says. No, that was you and me. 
We saw that movie with the blind dude, the horror movie in New oh, York. Oh yeah. What's that dude's name? Oh god. I can't remember his name. Thank I don't you know for what that his follow. Name was, but uh, yeah, I don't set tire. That movie uh, was crazy. He was the he was the like commander in Avatar. You know, the dude with the white hair who wanted to play Cable and all that stuff. Um, I think he would be a fucking phenomenal DFA guest. Like that dude's like just made for That'd DFA. Stephen Lang. That's what it is. Mm. Stephen Lang. That dude's like built for DFA. He'd be so great on DFA. Um, <laughs> Vin Diesel. I Couple really want Markiplier. I want uh, Edward James Olmos on the Star Wars show. That would be amazing. It's like a nerd dream to work I with want Edward Lucy James. Lucy Lawless to come here. Lucy Lawless Lucy is Lawless. another nerd dream. Oh that would be great. Oh my gosh, she's an Evil Dead now. Um, yeah, Mark Hamill another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, should. come on. Now we're just like, okay, fuck it. Like, let's move on. This is just, <laughs> this is gonna be like, god damn it. Uh, comments on generally on Gauntlet season two. Also, will you be playing at any point to win the most skulls title? I probably will. And my thought so far on season two is it's gonna be awesome. Chris is bringing so much awesome to the show. Um, we're gonna change things up a little bit tomorrow night. We didn't like the angle on Chris. We don't think it like added to his character at all. And then when somebody made a Twitter connection. Thing that was him as the uh, the nightmare dungeon oh. guy. I was like, let's run with it. So we're gonna put a black tarp up tomorrow and put him in front of the black with some colored light on him and just let him go all out. Cause he killed it. He killed it. And then we had him sitting in front of this red fucking curtain and it just it it wasn't good for it, it, that was on us. So we're gonna keep trying to make that better. We really should get Barack Obama since he's free now. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, cause you know I'm sh why? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be why? a great guest. Why not? Yeah, he'd be really good. Um, Zargo says, Speaking of this being your home, what are the best and worst parts of living in the studio? Do you worry about what effects it may have if one of you is sick or otherwise under greater than baseline distress? Um, I mean, we're all always in greater than baseline distress. <laughs> I mean, this, this world you're talking about where it's like, what would happen if you were working in the studio and you were really stressed because it was also your heart, like every day. I, I think everyone here is operating on really high anxiety all the time. Um, I operate naturally at about 98% anxiety levels, so it's fairly normal. Uh, I know Lucas and Alex have been going through some high anxiety. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Um, I don't know. It's not weird for me because I like, like I ran an art gallery and lived out of that. Yeah, that's for a while, and we had that. shows every day. It was very similar. That, in weird ways, that prepared me more for this job than anything else. That was like a really um, horrible version of this, like as far as living space wise, you know. Oh, it was gross. That was to nasty. Live in. I would not have ever lived. It was there. gross to live in. I, it was a treehouse inside of a. Loft. Not just that, but the people that you were living with at the time were gross. Gross people. Like the grossest. Mm -hmm. Gross people. Um, <laughs> as far as getting sick and stuff, we're kind of, we have isolated, I mean like fairly sort of isolated quarters. If I was sick, I wouldn't, I, I could stay in my area and rarely come out. You know? So, yeah. So that's not really... I don't feel like that's a really big idea. Big I mean, idea. I've, I've, yeah, I've, I've lived where I've worked many times. I mean, you kind of did too with the studio. Like, we're freelancers for the most part, or we used to be. So working from home is very common. Yeah, I've always used worked to that. from home. Yeah. It's just uh, home hasn't always been this <laughs> big, uh, big studio where, you know, there's a control room in your kitchen and stuff. Yeah. And your living room is a place that you don't go unless you're on camera. <laughs> But other than that, it's not really, it's not that different, I guess. Except the roommates thing. <laughs> Azrin, you make no sense, and it seems like you just have a thing against gay people, or you're dealing with some inner feelings that seem to conflict you, and it's making <laughs> you constantly lash out because of them. But if you keep it up, we'll just ban you, and because we don't care. Like, we have great audience members here. Your voice doesn't 
like drown that out. So if you just keep going with that, we'll just ban you and move on. <laughs> so <laughs> he's saying that like stress is gay or something. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I think you got some problems, man. Th- Thirty seconds into your stream and it just oozes. Cool. That's not how you spell oozes, but good. <laughs> 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 It just uzzes, man. Like, the game just uzzes right out of you. It uzzes so it's hard. It's just uzzing all over and all around you. Thank you, um, whatever your name was. Saros? For the, um, or... for the entertainment. <laughs> Good. <sighs> Let me guess, social snowflakes. We have no friends. Oh, yeah, Saros. You're right, we have, we, have, we have zero friends, man. You're totally right. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, man. I mean, we're just like gays with Uzis. That's what it is. We're just that's, gays with that's Uzis. That's what he was trying to say. Well, I get what you're trying to say. We're, we're saying gay people with Uzis. Gay people with Uzis. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, most of my gay friends have Uzis. We got a lot of them. So <laughs> that's pretty typical. I think you'll find in the gay community, just I mean, in my experience at least. Um. What happened to the shelf goblin that was on the set in the old place? Asked Trogaff. Where is that goblin? You mean that green guy? Is it? Oh yeah, it's right there. It's behind the TV. You just can't see it. It's right behind the TV. <laughs> Gay people with Uzis is my new band name. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. That would be the best be- like metal band name ever. <laughs> Gay people with Uzis. <laughs> like symphonic black metal. Awesome. <laughs> uh, got symphonic black metal. I need to Thanks listen to Nalteros. I need to listen to some more symphonic black people. Uh, uh, black, black metal. People, black metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to listen to some people. more symphonic black oh, people. All right. Um, Opeth, man. When was the last time you listened to Opeth? When was the last time I listened to Opeth? They kind of changed their style. They're not exactly symphonic black metal anymore, but. But are they symphonic black people? They're not symphonic black people either. <laughs> Where can I find that? Uh, but no. Uh, Opeth I haven't listened to probably in like five years. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> Alright. So, let's move on. Uh, <sighs> Eternal Night asks, Hey Zach, the script for your own personal hyper RPG nightmare game is turned in. With this dance party happening at 2K now, what subscriber number will we need to hit before you make the nightmare video? Um, oh, there was a script turned in for the, the nightmare game? <laughs> I don't know, we'll work on it. Whenever we get a chance. Oh, some of these comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if black metal would really suit this stream all that well all the time. Maybe for Honesty Hour. Yeah, it'd be perfect for Honesty yeah. Hour. Probably not the other stuff. Cradle of Filth. I just, I'd probably put me to sleep. <laughs> Black Metal puts me to sleep sometimes. It, to an extent, so like it's to, it get, of Some of like, it gets to like a level and I'm like, white noise a little yeah, bit. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's true. It just, yeah, it becomes, yeah. Uh, Floyd E7 says, Zach, would it be better for the channel to switch my subscription from a Twitch Pine sub to a normal Twitch sub? Well, Floyd I7, there's no difference. The only difference is if you keep forgetting. It's to more what, what do you Twitch want? Prime sub. What do you want? Really? Because you have to remember to resubscribe with Twitch Prime. Yeah. You don't uh, with a normal Twitch sub. It auto renews if you wanted to. Now, as far as how it affects us, it doesn't matter. A sub is a sub to us. Uh, if it's through Twitch Prime, if it's through Twitch Regular, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, so we still benefit the same amount as a channel. Uh, Megalo Bla- Blazemon asks, Zach, living under the same roof as Alex, do you find it increasingly <laughs> more difficult not to develop an inferiority complex? <laughs> That's such a good question. I'm so glad you asked that, Megalo Blazemon. Wait a second. Over the past year, you've been living with me, though. I think Malika's saying that he must already have a, an inferiority complex. I think that's exactly because, what she's trying to say. Yeah. Because He's as been living with Malika she mentioned uh, earlier today when I was playing XCOM, is you have to make me the smartest character. And I said, I can. And she said, we'll just make sure I'm smarter than you. <laughs> okay. And the most beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> just feeding him lines right now. <laughs> Do it! 
A Bind says, what are the books they're using for pencils and parsecs? Is it just the core rule book or more? I actually do not know, A Bind. It's probably just the core rule book, honestly. It's probably just the core. And I know there are certain rules that we're ignoring to make it better for streaming. Let's Adapt says, when you guys are planning a big charity stream like that, how far out do you generally start the process? We should have started a month ago, but the move was in the way. So we're kind of, we have a meeting tomorrow, and we're going to start talking about it. We probably should have started a month ago, though. It takes a while to plan that kind of stuff. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly nervous that we won't have enough time uh, to actually finish it. I just... I don't know. I mean, we'll pull it off. It's just a question of how big we can make it. And I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. There's just so many things going on right now, and we're still not fully recovered. And, like, we haven't found a routine yet. And that's really important for us as yeah. employees because what we do is so fucking crazy and long hours and difficult and there's so many things to keep track of with this small of a crew that you have to find a routine. You have to get yourself into this like really tight routine for each show to make sure it gets done efficiently. Angel Mitsu says she's been out of touch. When is the charity stream? Probably going to be February 28th again, like our one year anniversary. Yep, probably... Probably 28. Um, Treesley, Tree Skylark says, This may have been brought up before and I missed it, but is there any chance you can get Dan, Iffy, Matt, and other Hyper RPG hosts to continue the adventures, the adventures of Vox Moronica for the Halo Foundation charity stream? It has not been brought up before, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't, because that's not our brand. And that's kind of not a cool thing to do. So I wouldn't do that. Uh, Krellin says, Zach, with the new partnerships in place, how do your monthly costs compare to last year? Well, none of them are financial, so... We're getting raided by Firecrow! What? Thank you, Firecrow. Uh, what's up, Firecrow? Miss you, buddy. Firecrow is like one of the nicest guys on Earth. Firecrow, thank you for the raid. Welcome, uh, all the Firecrows. Friends, fans, loved ones, whatever you may be. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Would you kindly getting raided by Firecrow? Is it more than one? Farrington Empire. Empire. Oh, it's also. like a would you kindly oh, raid. They're there, right there. Yeah, it's a would you kindly raid. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Thank, Thank you. Would you, you so kindly? Much. All right. You can slow down the defense, guys. We got it. You defended the tower or whatever the fuck we are now. You got it. You good job. You, you got them with those well nerf done, guns and well they're properly done. annoyed. Um, yeah, Krella, none of the partnerships we have yet are financial. We're working on the financial ones, but currently they're all in-kind sponsorships. We were able to build this studio much cheaper than the last. Uh, we were able to... <laughs> you are definitely his bitch right now. 100%. No, we're just chilling. He has shown his dominancy. Over you. Uh, Witty Gabriel Goat, <laughs> thank you for that follow. Very much appreciate it. Thank you for that follow. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the partnerships <laughs> right now are in kind, which has kept our costs down from startup. Uh, that's been good. Uh, our costs to, to do all this were cheaper than last year because we already had a lot of the equipment. Um, but it's going to be a lot more expensive over time. So we need to grow at an exponential rate to cover the costs of how much more it is to work with all this new talent and new spaces and all that stuff. <laughs> Nick Fitz says, Zach, are we going to get the Sass Man Chronicles? I think a lot of people enjoyed watching you play decision-based games. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to play XCOM 2 until this humbles up because I'm enjoying it. I'm actually enjoying it even though I'm terrible at it. So, uh, but we'll see what's up after that. I know there's a Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale game in the works. Oh, oh yeah. Fuck, when that comes out, I'm going to be all over that. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, is Captain awesome. Flint in the house too? That fire looks so real! Because <laughs> yeah. it is. It is a real fire. Yoink. And, uh, Yoinker's wife. Yoinker's wife. Thank you for that follow. What's up? Thank you for following. Um, Stiver says, Zach, who's your favorite member of the HRBG team and why is it Kaiju? <laughs> um, because cute face. I'm not going to, yeah, I, I can only answer Kaiju tail. because anyone else will then get butt hurt. That it's not them if I say someone else, so it's gonna be Kaiju. Kaiju's my favorite member. Hyper RPG? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Malika's Look at that. Like, no, wait, never mind. What? Malika actually got butt hurt because I said kaiju. So it doesn't matter. No matter what, I'm in a situation where I cannot win was, on this question. That was a girlfriend death stare <laughs> if I ever saw one. Oh, if only we had a camera on her face right now. Mac Macaulay says, Zach, set up treat stream already. We can feed you so Malika doesn't have to slave over a hot stove. <laughs> also, think of all the treats we can give Kaiju. Uh, treat stream's kind of shitty. I know Emily was working on it, but it's kind of tough. Treat stream dog treats? I don't know if hmm. we can treat stream dog treats. Okay. That would be awesome. I don't know. They're dog bakeries. I think we should prior prioritize human food, personally, but... Oh, and as Alien Editor says, it doesn't work for both studios, so it's like we'd have to decide one or the other. Oh. But honestly, if we were going to do that, we'd probably just do it here, because the way Penny Arcade's set up, it's not really like a place you would deliver food, because yeah. you can't. Yeah, that's true. Honestly. Oh, yeah, you can't even ring the doorbell. You can't even ring the doorbell, so it wouldn't even work. So we could just do it for here. Xbox Machina, thank you for the three months of Twitch Prime subscription. Um, let's see, F Fufo, what's your favorite and least favorite thing about Seattle post-expansion? Well, I think working with Penny Arcade is amazing. Yeah. Least favorite thing is it's fucking cold up there. And the last couple times I've flown up there, it was fucking freezing, and there was snow on the ground, and I'm not okay Ooh. with it. Yeah. Um, J Double Up says, I can't catch Pencils and Parsecs live due to start time, but I want to contribute. Can I pre-purchase dice slash influence bits? Hmm. I, we're working on something, but nothing yet. I would say no right now, um, but there's many different ways you can contribute. And the thing is, the way this channel works, we don't contribute show to show. So it's, it's all, everyone's in this together. Um, everybody's in this together. One show doing well helps another show do well, vice versa. Now, if a show is like not pulling its weight at all, we have to cut it. But for the most part, if the channel's doing well, the shows are doing well. So you can contribute to any aspect and it can help towards keeping that show alive. Um, have you all thought about scripted stage theater content? Nah. I think the improvisational role playing is more fun and interactive. Okay. Fenris83 says, Zach, speaking of cost effectiveness, if this is something you can talk about, when you get special guests for shows like Hero Clicks, is that cost effective? Is there a price range that is acceptable if, ex acceptable if an actor, actress, or somebody wants to be on a show? Fenris, we don't pay our special guests um, because we can't. We can't afford to. And that's part of why the shows are set up in that way. We pay all the hosts that are regular talent because they carry the weight. But if somebody's coming by as a special guest, it's usually to promote something, to plug something, to talk about their Twitch channel, their shows, their whatever. Um, we usually can't pay them. Sometimes, if they ask for gas or travel costs, we'll, we'll help them out. But we, we, can't, we can't afford to do that. We'd go out of business really, really fast. So it's usually a, a mutual decision to help each other grow um, because we know that we've got an amazing fan base, and when they come by, you guys are really awesome. Now, our dear friend Azurin wants to know, what's your favorite part or Mississippi? Huh, what? Good question. No, I feel bad for making fun of them. I think they might just be stupid. <laughs> I kind of feel bad about it. You think? I don't know. Yeah, oh my god. Someone sent us a bunny kigurumi. Why don't we make it a wow. ball tonight? That's a pretty nice we'll one. Get so many subs, you'll put it on. I think I'm okay. Um, you sure? it's okay. It that yeah. Oh, Kaiji's already eating it. Good. Okay, next question. You will be avenged. Uh, these are some questions chat. Is there anything ever going to happen with the video editing chat room here on Discord? There's been no activity since September last year. That's up to you guys. That's a community thing. So, um, that's a community thing. We have an intern that's helping us edit. She's been doing an amazing job. She's currently working on trailers. We have another person that's going to come in and start helping us with editing very soon. So when it comes to the that uh, video editing chat in the Discord, that's... That's that's more like a community thing. If you guys wanted to work on stuff together to do like things that were done for Shadowrun and stuff like that. Um, two, how can I help out with the channel more outside of sharing on the interwebs? That's the best way. It's the best way. Just tell your friends. Yeah. 
Tell your friends. If you like something we do, share it with your friends in a meaningful way. Um, that does so much. Uh, it really does. Because word of mouth is how this shit works. It really is. What should the uh, Kigurumi goal be? For you to wear? Whatever you're comfortable with. Someone said 1860 subs. That's 10 subs away. Eight subs well, away. Well, actually, no, we're. Oh, eight? Eight subs away. Well, that works. We won't hit it. Yeah. If you said 1860, we won't hit it. Not tonight. Too many, too many regulars in here tonight. It's true. Um, Lady Kekyu says, I was at OrcaCon last weekend and made a bunch of contacts to check out the shows this week. One of them was a board game store called Games and Gizmos, which they have a war, Warhammer gathering on Fridays. This week they will have their TVs tuned into DFA. Um, so trying to spread the word. That's great, Lady Kekyu. That is awesome. Thank you for that. That's really cool. Um, Duganator says, ah, ha, aha, I'm here. Zach, how is integrating HRPG South Bend? It's just HyperRPG. It's all one, one channel. Uh, have there been any challenges? If so, what are some of those challenges and how do you overcome them? Um, I answered this one earlier. It's pretty much just tech and time. Tech and time. There's not enough time in the day and the tech's been kind of faulty. So we're working on it though. We've, we've knocked out some of the bugs that we were having last week and the week before. This week's been more solid, as you've probably noticed. Someone said that uh, their friends, I think it was Trograph, said their friends would not understand watching a three-hour show on the internet. I get that. And that's true. I completely not, it's understand. It's not for everybody. It's but, not for everybody. You know, you never know who might eventually get into it. It's kind of just one of those things you don't really know until you try mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, like he says, I noticed the gauntlet doesn't have the Pathfinder pop-up posters anymore. Has the association with Paizo ended? And if so, is gauntlet still sticking with Pathfinder rules going forward? The association with Paizo is still in effect. It's just that they wanted those um, pop-ups to stay in Seattle because they used them for trade shows and stuff. So we couldn't bring them down here with us. That's all. You can enter ask, does HyperRPG intend on streaming any mobile games? Maybe a show about how to get most mm. out of freemium games. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. I think if Malika wanted to play a game on Malika Vision... <laughs> it could... might happen on our YouTube. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, Malika's shown... Uh, she's talked about possibly wanting to do some YouTube reviews of mobile games, and we could help her out with that. Because we already use Bluestacks on some of our computers here, so we could technically capture them and stuff, but uh, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to streaming games, like I said, we don't we don't necessarily try to be crazy with them like other streamers necessarily and make it our career. But at the same time, we can't have it be something that costs us that doesn't return, and that's a concern of mine with mobile games. Somebody um, digs your tattoo on your arm. Cool. <laughs> Great. Um, it's the less than three. Um. Bender6191 says, I chrome Chromecast you guys a lot, which means I'm not very active in chat, but I'm watching and engaged. Does that affect numbers because it's just running on my TV? Uh, Bender6191, it shows you as a viewer, as a unique viewer, when you're watching on Chromecast. It shows up. So, thank you. Yeah, either way. If you're tuning in, no matter how you're watching, it's contributing to the unique viewer count. Yeah. Trogaf says, do you have any chances to see Twitter conversations, Shane, about PNP thoughts? I disagree with that chain. I did see your chain, Trogaf, and Emily and I actually had to talk about it, and I disagree. I think um, we already put out a video, we'll put out more information, but if you really, if we tried to dumb down every single thing we do on this channel, we wouldn't even play Shadowrun. So, I think the reason, and we talked to Bert when we first named those about naming it a boost dice and naming it an ability dice and naming it a proficiency dice is because they are named the actual dice that they are in the books. You could easily Google what those dice mean. If we had just called them blue dice, green dice, yellow dice, it would be even more confusing because people would have no idea what in the hell those things did. But because they are the actual dice that's used in the system, you can easily Google what they are. And if you know the system, you know what they do. Um, so we have to, we can't dumb everything down to like super, super amount. We have to allow the audience to do 
a little bit of work to know what certain things are in a game or in a system. Because uh, we go too much less than that, it's just not going to work. What if I'm watching in a tree through the window of someone else's house? Still contributes to the viewer numbers. Amazingly. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No? It doesn't. Oh. You said everything counted, though. But it doesn't. Not this if you're is watching. no longer honesty hour. Not He's if you're watching from lying. a fucking tree. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Dishonesty hour. But starts now. I did, I did see the whole like the whole chain and everything, and, and I'm just, I'm glad that you're so invested that you want you're having ideas. I will always take your ideas and think about them. We had a whole discussion about it, but I just I disagree. I think it's. I don't want to. I don't want to dumb it down anymore. I, I think that having them named what they actually are in the book makes it easier for people to find and less confusing. Are viewing parties a bad idea? Yes. Not if everyone has their own. <laughs> yes and no. Has it pulled up on their phone and on mute? Yes and no. And uh, yes and no. So, um, I think. <laughs> Watching this in a Netflix stand-up and the laugh track keeps syncing up with Zach. <laughs> Great. <That's> um, awesome. <laughs> viewing parties are kind of nice if you do them in public. I think they're really cool in public because then other people are going to see what you're doing. Be curious. Want to know what it's all about. It creates more of a situation of exposure. Um, that being said, this is all a very social experience, so there is something pretty cool about five people getting together to watch an RPG that we make. Like, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, so I can't really say that that's a bad thing. Oh. Techie Carry says, are there any hey. LA guests that you want to be on the channel? I hope the Hero Forge people and Kathleen Elliott will be appearing oh. soon. Hey! You know better. Eh? I, yeah, I... Oh, I love it. Um, that's Lucas is doing the booking right now because I'm working on other stuff. So if you have ideas for people that are local that you think would be great on the channel, send them to Lucas on Discord and let him know so he knows to reach out to them because we're still getting the word out. So if there's people like that, hit him up on Discord and let him know. Grasnick says, uh, Amazon.com doesn't deliver your t-shirts to my country in the EU Netherlands. Is there a known workaround or will there be changes in the future so I can order them? Apparently they just released it for the EU this week. I'm pretty sure Emily made a post on Discord. We got an email from Amazon saying that they released our shirts in the EU this week. Really? So maybe check. Yeah. Maybe check. Um, Duganator says, For Malika, I've been playing my singing monsters and it's pretty entertaining. Might be worth checking out. I'll let her know. And Quiet Geek says, Given the tech problems you've talked about, is there any one thing in particular, hardware or software, that you wish existed to make tech stuff easier? Um, oh, EU equals UK and Germany only right now, Zenbo oh. says. Well, that's not really EU Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, it's UK and Germany. Um, yeah. There's supposed to be changes in the future. They're supposed to keep releasing in other, uh, other countries. Um, so... As far as if there was something I wish existed, just fucking stable software for what we do. That would yeah. be great. But there's so little competition in the field. Now, the, I, I, Props to the people making it, though. I do have to give that. Nobody's doing what we're doing with it, so we encounter problems that other people don't. Our problems are very fucking unique. And it makes it really difficult because you can't Google the problem. Yeah. Like, we, the problems we have, we can't Google it because nobody else is trying to do what we're doing, so they don't have these problems. Um, some stuff though is very common and it's all over the forums anyone anyone that uses wirecast software knows about craig s craig s is their lead forum guy that answers questions and he does so in a very snarky and sassy way oh. search any problem for wirecast craig s will be in there being like it's your problem not ours <laughs> basically <laughs> and it's really frustrating because it's like no dude i'm not dumb I know it's your problem. Like I can that. go through all these other things and see it working everywhere else. I can open up fucking XSplit on the same computer and it works. What's wrong with your software? It's probably on your end. Like that bug where you tried to uh, stream and it just doesn't work? Just didn't go. <laughs> just didn't go. Yeah. It just wouldn't stream. It caught you in a feedback loop. Sure, it's not their problem. Not though. their problem, though. Not their fucking problem. 
Mm-hmm. But there's no competition. Just, there's there's live stream. How do you VMix. how do you release a software meant for streaming and the one thing it doesn't do is stream? That blew no. my mind. Well, that one was hilarious. But Deathmaster, why not OBS? I wouldn't. Sh- we couldn't do half of our fucking shows with OBS. It's yeah, a, it'd work. be impossible. Wouldn't work. I don't know if you guys fully understand how complex these goddamn RPGs are. Yeah. There are uh, a lot of inputs, a lot of different sources, a lot of layers. Oh, you know what? No, didn't try turning it on and off. Mm, that's yeah, a good actually, idea. that's how we fix it most times. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. I fucking wish I was kidding. Restarting the computer is a common fix for Wirecast. So stupid, man. I fucking hate even thinking about it. It is it, it bothers me so much on a fundamental level yeah. of how frustrating it is every day. You like cross your fingers. Anytime you go to adjust um, either the Twitter widget or um, if you have to refresh a video card, you are crossing your fingers and you are squeezing every muscle in your body because I'd say 50% of the time it crashes. That's terrible. And having to refresh a source can happen. Like if something gets unplugged and you got to plug it back in. Or if you have to change sources mid-show, which happens a lot on charity drives and stuff like that because you can't plan for everything. Um, it's it's just a fucking nightmare. Because you just, you, you know, it's like so easy for it to crash. and Oh, drives me nuts. Zach being angry is really cute. <laughs> cute? Great. Um, I'm happy for you. I think Malika would agree. Mm mm. She wouldn't agree with that at all. I think she finds it quite frustrating that I'm always angry. What's wrong with you? <laughs> mm-hmm. She probably thinks it's cute when people mess with you. But yeah. <laughs> Most stressed out stream of 2017. I don't know. No, I think it's pretty really. laid back. Are you kidding me? You yeah. must not watch our stuff that much. I... <laughs> No, that was from uh, that was from our new new viewer. Oh. <laughs> I I feel absolutely no stress whatsoever right now. I don't know. What did that thing just turn off? Yeah, I think the battery died. Oh. Zach's chat screen kind of went kaput. Does anybody have any uh, any non-stream related? non-company business related stuff I was telling people when Malik and I were doing honesty hour it used to be all personal stuff now it is like a business show it seems like well I gotta answer questions that's the thing like oh uh, no they're the investors it, yeah the it's way I so, see it now it's, so it's like everybody in the chat room are investors of this content yeah. and I have to answer and this is the best time to do it yeah what about morning update I was wondering that last week is like just thinking. I don't want to. I don't want to get real with people like that on morning update. I like uh, morning okay. update is great to say. Here's what's happening today. Be excited for it. Not like, hey, shit, man. We're like, we're low on money right now. Like that doesn't start the day off great. Be like, uh, hey, you know what? Fucking shit. Like, this is really hard, and this is happening. But be excited. Coming up next. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really do that. Um, I'm doing great, everybody, and uh, I've been eating pretty well lately. Um, Terror Trooper says, no question, so sorry, Alienator, but just a thank you for Zach, Malika, and Alex, Lucas, and all the others. Last year was amazing. Thank you all for your great work. I wish I could get more Germans into watching the channel. Terror Trooper, you're, you're good. You're good. We'll, we'll play some Paragon soon, hopefully. Uh, Grasnack says, I'm a stupid typed hyperspace RPG and found the shirts on German Amazon. Oh, cool. Grassnake just found him on German Amazon. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, Tr- yeah, Tree Scar yeah. says if Ryan comes down at some point, chances of getting on the couch with Gabby and Allison for an honesty hour like you had for yourself. That would be fucking hilarious. I don't know how. I don't think Ryan, no offense to Ryan, would know how to handle himself in that situation. They're on like next level bits. Allison and, uh, yeah, Allison and Gabby are, I would like to see them on a couch with Keller. That's what I would like to see. Mm. 
Oh, that would actually kind of freak me out, probably. It might freak them out even more. I've not gone to Scoops yet, no. It's your fucking loss, man. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We figured out I had gone to Scoops Yeah, you before, had gone to Scoops before. But I didn't remember it, so, yeah. Zach, what would be the minimum specs for the RTMP server? I might have access to one new rack mount servers with older Xeon CPUs in them that can appear in LA. Uh, it's a tough one, Negiyama. Um... Because there's still conversion happening. It's not just outputting. It's not just an output. It's still doing an H.264 conversion. Mm -hmm. Mini Moose. The beatings will continue until morale improves heart. The beatings will continue until morale, <laughs> until morale improves. improves heart. Yep. Thank you, Mini Moose. Thank you for that. Um, so, Negi, I don't know if a 1U rack mount would work because... Uh, live stream the software that's that's running the RTMP um, is a fairly heavy piece of software, like really heavy piece of software. Quintar, and the, thank you for that and the conversion, uh, the conversion that's taking place is pretty intense. So I, I don't don't think that would work, unfortunately. But we're we're having we're we're trying to get Corsair to give us one. Uh, Wilder1251 says, Zach, part of the change up in questions with Honesty Hour is that we don't have the music list you used to play on old school GNS, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'd be inspired to ask in-depth emotional questions with the return of it. Well, I stopped doing that because you guys fucking complain constantly. <laughs> because it got muted every fucking time, and then we put oh, it up on YouTube and it'd get taken yeah. down because of copyright notices. So yeah. I stopped because y'all fucking complained about it. Um... The reason I did that on Geek and Sundry was so it would get muted and nobody could see it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. See, that's a good idea, though. That's a, yeah, that is a good idea. I knew if I played music that was copyrighted, that's very crafty. No one could check in the next day and see what I said. <laughs> yeah. Um, White Rabbit, the new music will have strings and uh, will just be more mature in general and better. Are they talking about Star Wars? I have no channel. No, no my, my music that I'll release Oh, your this music. Week. Oh. I mean, not, not this week, sorry. Oh, this year. Please. If you more mature, I, I'm going to make more mature music now. I'm an adult. <laughs> not like, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> what do you mean by mature music? Um, just not, just more compositionally mature. Not as... Hi, I'm going to make more compositionally mature music because I'm an adult. <laughs> okay. My name's Alex. I grew up. I'm going to make mature compositional music now. I did grow up. It's been forever since I put anything out. It's true. Uh, Bender6191 says, What gaming chairs do you recommend or do you guys just use other office chairs? Uh, we just use office chairs here. Because I'm not fucking spending money on a DX racer unless they give us one. Because <laughs> fuck that. Oh, gaming chairs? Yeah, uh, fuck that. Ikea? For a hundred bucks at the most? If you okay. want the most comfortable chair ever, get a Herman Miller Aeron for around thousand dollars. Here's the thing, guys. When it comes to set design, it's about how it looks on camera. Yeah. Not how it feels. <laughs> These chairs and are how it saves though. money. Oh yeah, and these are from Ikea. Oh yeah, most of what we get is from Ikea because it's the cheapest place to get what we get. The shelves on the wall, fucking Ikea. Everything is Ikea. It's cheap. And it lasts for camera. The stuff when you're living with it's shit. But uh, it's great for camera. It's great for making sets. Yeah. It's great. Sporophyte, I know, but I actually have some stuff I'll probably send to those guys. The devs. Duke Nader says, if you guys were to... Oh. Money. Thanks for telling Kaiju he is an adequate puppy. I know you're all working really hard at making Hyper RPG be amazing. But you are all doing a great job. <laughs> this might be pain that's talking, but you are all good pups. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rose. We're all good puppies. Thanks I'm happy with being a good puppy. Yeah, I'm treated like one. <laughs> um, what nice did you do to curve. me at the movie theater yesterday? Huh? You did something at the movie th Oh, you shushed me. Like you shushed Kaiju. Ikea can't handle Iffy though. Yeah, don't talk during the movie, jerk. I wasn't talking during the movie. Well, your girlfriend shushed you at a movie? 
It was before the movie started. Before the movie started. And she shushed me like kaiju. I was like, don't do that. And she was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like that sounds like Malika. It's like, I'm not the dog, damn it. Um, kind of, though. Duganator says, if you guys were to play a game of Outbreak Undead based out of the new LA studio, how do you think the party would fare? I'll fucking die. I don't know, Lucas and I are pretty handy. Alex would be fucked. I don't even know what it is. So, yeah. It's 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 an interesting RPG. It's really tough to stream, but it's fun to play with your friends because it's based on real world stats. You fill out a really long questionnaire about how well you could survive a zombie apocalypse and then you get put in a zombie apocalypse and your stats are based on your real world skills. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. Not a dog, Zach, a project. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you will be avenged says okay none company related question I'm currently working a retail job that is an alright job not what I want to do with my life but it is steady work and I'm working a second job on the side that is a wedding video job that I really enjoy and is kind of in the industry I want to be in film and video creator so my question is do you have some insight on making the jump from having a steady job to doing freelance creative work that is not as steady um, dive in Let's and let's cross let's, your fingers. <laughs> well, no, it's not about crossing your fingers. We both know that. Yeah. Let's be real. No, um, are you ready? Like you have to ask yourself a very serious question. Are you ready to do it? But when you decide, when you make that decision that you're going to stop your regular job, the retail job, to do something that's involved in a creative field, no matter what it may be, are you fucking ready? Because in that moment. Your entire livelihood is based on your tenacity and your tenacity alone. And it's fucking terrifying, but it's really rewarding. It's really rewarding. That also means terrifying. Are you, that also means are you ready to go uh, extended periods, perhaps, without receiving a check? Without any fucking money. Yeah. Um, my health problems over the course of my life have been very interesting through being poor. Um, I feel, though, I've lived a very fulfilled life, so I... I am in. I understand though that I'm not like everyone else. I will tell people, do it. If you were to take my advice and follow my lead, I would say fucking go for it. Life's too short. But I understand that a lot of the stresses I put myself through and the ways I've lived my life are not for everyone. And it would be stupid for me to think that other people could get any joy out of doing that. Yeah. I myself have come to terms with the fact that I will probably always be stressed because that's all I know and not everyone can live that way. Not to say that all freelancers do. Some people hit a stride and they, they do great. But your percentage of success yeah. is very low. It's like no bullshit. Like surviving in a creative field of your own design is a very low chance of success and you will only survive through tenacity and just stick in the fuck with it. You save you know, before you make your jump, probably save up. Yeah. Give yourself three months of income. Yeah. First, at least, at the least, at least that much. For sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. At the least three months, man. Yeah. I, some sometimes things are like things. Things will go really well, and you're like, hell yeah, I've got plenty of money right now. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, awesome, haven't been paid in three months. That's great. When is my next job going to pay off? So you just never know. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, the uh, <laughs> part of the reason I have no attachment to things like physical items, I remember back in like, I mean, I haven't had a real like day to day job since I did that little short stint as a character artist at Worlds of Fun oh. <laughs> years and years ago. And before oh, that, yeah. it was like 2002. I mean, I, I've been doing, I mean, this is the first steady paycheck job I've ever had that's full time ever mm, yeah but I'm still it still feels freelance because every day is kind of like if we don't make any money because well, yeah it could fail at any time it could so. fail at any time <laughs> so it doesn't feel like a steady job when you're the CEO of something that you're like you have no security in but um yeah as you're in a, a year is a good idea for sure yeah but I also understand that that's also bullshit. Waiting a year, saving up at a miserable fucking job to do something you want. Now, if yeah. you can do that, if you can be happy doing that, that's the smarter thing to do because in your free time, you can be building up your resume, you can get a website ready, you can get all these tools put into place to where when you're ready to make the jump, you're actually ready. 
I couldn't do that because I'd have to just go for it. But part of the reason I've developed like no attachment to physical items is most of the way I've lived my life since college to now is like when you fall on hard times, you just sell all your shit. And you do these weird odd jobs, you know, mm. and like, be like, well, I was really cool when I owned that Xbox, but now, you know, fuck that. I'm just going to go sell it. It's just an item. I don't need it to be happy. Sell it. What Clothes, sell them. Yeah. Shoes, sell them. Whatever. Whatever the fuck you can sell, you sell it uh, I to sold, survive. I sold, like, <laughs> all my nicest, uh, most expensive audio equipment before I moved out here. I yeah. didn't need it, technically. It was like... Um, you know, it was luxury stuff, really. But, yeah, so that was, like, that was the most stuff. I, I got rid of most of my stuff, really, like, most of my belongings in general <laughs> before I moved out here. And it's kind of freeing. It's kind of liberating, really. I don't regret it at all. I kind yeah. of miss one thing, but... <laughs> now I'm in a different position over the last five years because so much of my job is tied to the equipment I own. It's a little different. So like yeah. a lot of the stuff we use in the studio is equipment I had for my production studio before uh, before this, and that makes it a little different for me. But it's an asset. It's like a business asset. I could still yeah. sell it if I had to. Yeah. But it's I don't know, man. It's it's a weird life. Uh, it's rewarding, <laughs> but it's weird. It's it's I. It's hard to understand how some people have stability and comfort. And I don't really know what that is. So I can't comprehend it. Because I've never had it in my entire life. I've never not been paycheck to paycheck, month to month, like, yeah. just, just scared. Always. Angel, I do have that Hitman figure. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, somebody asked what I do. Uh, Jimmy Eat Meatloaf or something. <laughs> I am an audio engineer. Do audio post production for film stuff or mix like music mixing, and uh, oh, sometimes I make money off of making music also, or singing. Just kind of anything like that. So that is what I do, and I don't actually work here. I don't work for Hyper RPG. Get the fuck. That was out. the other. That Get was the, the other part out. of the question. Go back to your room. <laughs> Fucking, if I would have known how fucking big his room was. <laughs> God. This asshole! Alright? Uh, this oh, asshole. Hey, Azrin is, uh, is following that. Ah, fuck Thank you. you. Uh, this <laughs> asshole. If I would have known how fucking large the room is that he got, I'd be charging him like $300 more a month for like LA standard rate. Not even standard. That would still be cheap. That would still be cheap. <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got a good deal. It's true. Bullshit. <laughs> My job at Hyper RPG is to pay the rent. Um, no, I'm not getting paid to do this right now. No, definitely not. <laughs> Fuck no. None of us do. Almost any time you see me or Lucas or Alex on camera. It's not paid for. It's just, it's actually trying to keep costs down. Yeah. <laughs> we asked Alex to come on because we can't afford someone else to do it. Yeah, and because I'm better than everybody else. No, it's because, no, it's because you're cheaper. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't lie to yourself. Um, I'm not lying to myself. You're Sierra, Sierra, God damn it. Uh, we, we did get the purple chair today. I just haven't put it together yet. And then I was Duke, wondering where that came from. I thought that Duke was Nader says, since you mentioned your health just now, and since it's been a while since I personally have asked you about it, how are you feeling, Zach? Eh, don't ask. Don't ask. Well, operate on a don't ask, don't tell with the, that stuff. I prefer it to be that way. My health insurance is all fucked up. Actually, I don't have health insurance right now. They're supposed to be calling me about that. I haven't been insured for two months now, and I had medical stuff I needed. So that was awesome. Thanks. Thanks, California. I'm really nervous now that even with our good health plan that I might be fucked real soon because of my pre-existing condition, but, you yeah. know, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Obama, for those couple of years of awesome health care coverage that I got while you were the president. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh... Uh, I don't know if the purple chair has arms. Uh, it does. It do the one that came in? Pretty sure it does. The one that just came in? The one by the door? You're not, 
Oh, I thought not the one that we built. One. No, the one that just came in. Oh, no. I, I don't know. know. It didn't show on Amazon that they did, but the other one that showed up did. So it was kind of funny. We're renting this house, Floyd I. We're just renting. Fucking shit. <laughs> Can't. Nah. We're just renting. We're just renting. We're not that dumb. Sage Topian out here is co- covered California. I, I had, yeah, I didn't lose health insurance from ACA. It's just different coming out here. Yeah. And they fucked it all up. I mean, I have... We, we give people health insurance here at Hyper and get a pretty good deal right now. It's expensive for the mm. company. It's really expensive. Uh, but, you know, the Affordable Care Act made it to where people couldn't deny me coverage for my pre-existing condition. So, I'm pretty nervous about that. Um, I don't really believe a word the... President-elect tweets, so just because he says in a tweet that everyone will still be covered, I have yet to see a Republican plan put on the table that says anything about pre-existing conditions still being covered, so I don't buy it until I see it, so until then, I'm still going to be nervous, and I say all this as if I actually go to the doctor and take care of myself. Yeah. (laughs) Elmsworth, that would be predicated on um, enough money to pay for that. You're gonna have to field questions to me because I got no chat room. So I'm just reading Discord. Okay. I am just reading the Discord. Because my right. chat room's down. Tablet died. Yep. Which I don't understand why. It's been plugged in this whole time. Oh, how many how many people live in this house? Zach, Alex, Malika, who else? That's it. That's it. Just the three of us live here. Three of us. Um, sometimes I feel like there are more people living here, but that's not the case. Sometimes I feel like Lucas lives here. And then he goes home at night and I'm like, oh, that's right, he doesn't actually live yeah, here. Yeah, he's here a lot. He's here a lot. A lot more here than he is his own place, for sure. Uh, am I still having... Yes, I'm sh- I am still having the insurance issues, and it's supposed to be worked out this week, but I have not received a call yet, so who knows? Whatever. I will just eat healthy and get good sleep, and I'll be great. <laughs> That's how life works. <laughs> That's how those things work. I will keep from any accidents happening to me, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't really leave the house, but... That's not true. That's true. <laughs> I guess I don't leave the house. Yeah, I leave the house. The only, time I've le- I, the only time I leave the house now is to go to the airport, which is really close. I leave the house on weekends. I don't, throughout the week, I really don't leave the house, I guess. I barely leave the room, and usually... Uh, I come out in the evening to make dinner, and Malika's like, oh, hey, that's right, you live here. Because <laughs> no one sees me all day, really. Truth. Yeah. Um, so if you guys have more questions for me, now's the time to ask in Discord. Uh, we will be closing this up in like 15 minutes. This will not be some stupid five-hour long honesty hour that keeps everyone in the house awake. And that was the most mean, amazing honesty me. hour. That, one, that was actually a good one. People liked that and, and connected to it awake. because... It was Aww. very personally oriented. Right, Malika? Huh? Last week's honesty hour was really good, right? I mean, I think we were just trying to get a nice, even sub numbers. That's I, I wasn't worried about subs at all. <laughs> Where does Keller live? In one of the bathrooms. He lives yeah. in a toilet somewhere. You could live in that attic. Yeah. For me? Best ever. Okay. It was amazing. It was great. See, fuck you, Zach. Okay, great. You don't know anything about Honesty Hour. You've, kept, for, you've forgotten kept the, me pure, up the purity tonight. of what Honesty Hour used to be. Hey! Money. All right. I know it's not much, but having recently found my way to Hyper and discovering all these awesome shows and a wonderful community has been a really positive experience for me. Awesome. That is great. Thank you so much, Fairy X Decay. Really Thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for that contribution. Really appreciate it. Glad uh, that you've made your way into the Supper family. Yeah. And uh, last week's Honesty Hour was long because Zach wasn't a part of it. And so Malika and I just talked to you guys for as long as we felt like it. And talked in circles for a very long time of it. I heard a lot of it. And you didn't hear shit. You have no I idea what you're talking about. I heard every single word because it sounded like you were right in the room with me. I heard everything, and I was like, oh my fucking god, I have to get up early and work. It's a good thing you're not one of the viewers, so your opinion doesn't matter. I run the company. (laughs) 
and well, have to work. <laughs> we have a chat full of people saying it was a great honesty hour. Good, great, good for them. <laughs> Fucking do it somewhere else next time so you don't keep me up all night. Um, you put us in there instead of here. I know, it was stupid. That was your choice. Well, we weren't ready in here. We had some tech issues. Hey, Critter Nation says, Alex, you guys were my favorite show of the week. There we go, Malika. Thank you so much, Critter Nation. Cool, great. You're helping a lot with Thank their ego. You. Thank you so much. Helping a lot with that ego problem. Ah. Zach, get earplugs. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Duganator says, since it's a new year, can each of you talk about your favorite movies from 2016? Which one did you enjoy most? Which mm. hit you hardest on an emotional level and why? I didn't watch shit in 2016. I didn't either, honestly. I'm trying to think of which movies my, I saw. My favorite movie of 2016 was Kubo and the Two Strings. Uh, that was probably my favorite. Is that question directed towards me, too? Sure. More Alex. I agree. <laughs> what was your favorite movie? Of? Oh, man, you have so <laughs> yeah, much I'm dog completely hair. completely covered in fur. It's great. Um, I don't know how hairy you are underneath, but it's like not it really. went through your shirt. Yeah, <laughs> sleeping with earplugs is uncomfortable and annoying. No, shirt. it builds pressure in your ear. I can't do it. I I wanted to see Doctor Strange and I did not. Doctor um, Strange. Oh yeah, Zach was like, eh, visual spectacle. Recently, like the the last two movies I remember actually seeing because they were recent was La La Land and Rogue One. Shogaf, thank you for that five dollars. Goblin tipping money for firewood. Hashtag Shaiwazi. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, yeah, La La Land was really great. I loved that movie. You love that movie? Yeah. That's yeah, really good too. Night. I liked it. I oh, that's okay. Saw? Yeah. I didn't know. I, I had no idea what you were seeing. Yeah, I thought it was really. I was good. trying to explain to her why. I was very pleasantly surprised. I like that, but, but not can't musicals? stand modern musicals. Oh, they're it's, very different. They're so different. There's actually symbolic representation through visual, through music, yeah. through pacing, through editing, through shot compositions, instead of just exposition. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, the use and timing of the music, all that really worked. It was great. This yeah, is a Bollywood really good. movie I want to show you that I think is what you would respect. I want to see Arrival. I've not seen Arrival. I did. I want to see Arrival. Well, Malik is the Strange. only person I know who's seen Arrival and wasn't impressed by it. Every other person I've talked really? to said it was like their favorite movie of the year, and Malik was like, I, I went out with Greg and Son, and we're like, meh, it was okay. Um, I'm at the height where I can't read the chat room because it's behind a camera. So, love you guys. <laughs> Uh, the movie that I saw that made me cry in the movie theater was, uh, um, it was called The Handmaiden, and I watched it with Strix. I do want to see that because it's a Park Chan-wook film, and he's one of my favorite directors of you all time. You should also just see it because it's a good film. I know! It's a good film. Well, I'm busy. Oh, TV of, uh, 2016, I really liked season two of Daredevil. I liked a lot it. of TV in 2016. I watched yeah. more TV than movies. Yeah, same here. For sure, uh, on Netflix. Yeah. Fucking Outcast was my surprise hit of the year for TV. Oh, shit. I loved Outcast. Um, Atlanta. I like Preacher. Yeah. Atlanta's Atlanta like show of the is, year. Yeah. yeah. Fucking great. And the new season of Black Mirror. Holy Preacher shit. was great. Black Mirror was great. Outcast was great. Atlanta, though, was like a surprise that blew me away. I had no idea why I should be excited about it. And the second we started watching it, I just couldn't stop. Yeah. So fucking great. Atlanta and Black Mirror, my favorite things, probably. Oh yeah, there's that one episode. This is a DFA shirt. Not Apocalypse it's Now. Very good. <laughs> I'm posting it here because Zach's chat room is busted and Alex won't read it, but last week's HH did go too long. I tried to stay oh, up I for didn't it. See that comment. I ended up getting really sick. It was good, but man. <laughs> <laughs> I would have read that if I'd seen it. Um, Dave Davlin wants to know when are we getting some pooch at Hyper RPG? That's a good question. We need some pooch, especially on uh, Indomitable. Uh, Redo Fifty says, "How did you get Darren DePaul for pencils and parsecs?" We asked. Hold on. Uh, TV is only weak if you're watching weak TV. Oh There's yeah, great, brilliant uh, stuff. I on, feel TV, on TV has made it harder for me to enjoy movies, yeah. which is unfortunate. There is absolute garbage all over like network TV. Yeah, but there's. Great oh, stuff. look, Stranger Things was also in 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stranger Things. That Jesus. was awesome, too. too. So good. Yeah, you know? TV is like upped the ante so much that I have different expectations going into film now. I want film now to be more of an artistic, cinematic experience because TV is going to fill the kind of character sequential for me. Mm -hmm. Like, 
the fact that, and I think Cameron had a point last time, when you're talking about, like, everyone with movies now just cares about plot, 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 and it's just like, I, like, if I'm going to go to the fucking movie, I want to see cinema, because I can get story and plot through TV better than I can movies right now, and I'm going to feel more for those characters, I'm going to get more in touch with them over time, and have a closer connection with them and their stories, because the, the TV allows me to with the time involved. Netflix is TV. It's still a television format. It's still it's oh, the yeah, time it's format and the the series yeah, kind it's of TV. idea. So art, yeah, TV. like as far as format and what it technically is and made for, it's absolutely TV as opposed to a feature film. Can I just mention Lemony Snicket is amazing right now. Can I just love on that TV show right now? I, I didn't love know about it. Neil. Oh, Lemony Snicket is. Fucking great. Neil Patrick Harris was so born good. for that role. I love it. It's on Netflix it. right now. It's so about good. It. It's really good. That's an, It's really great. I love so many things about that. That's the kind of... The girl, too. Absurdist Mo- kind Molina. of... Melina. She's, she's really good. Thank yeah. you, Decimator. I'm a huge fan. Like, Pushing Daisies was one of my favorite TV shows when it was on. Um, big, big fan of that kind of stuff. I had a uh, question about your shirt. Yeah. What, what? that is. They're a VR company that I have a free shirt from. There we go. Most of my shirts are you from companies. You heard it here first, folks. That give me shirts. Because uh, that's the only way I can dress myself. Um, <laughs> it's no joke, either. Like, all of my clothes are torn up and ragged. <laughs> it's very true. I got you a few things, and then Mitch called you out. was like, did you let your woman dress you? It's a very Mitch thing to say. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny, because I listened to a song today. It was like, I don't let my woman dress me. <laughs> I do. It's great. <laughs> um, do you expect another year of Oscars so wide, or do you think the Academy has managed to get its head far enough out of its ass to recognize other great performances? I don't know. I have. I haven't watched shit. Like that's the thing. I, I have no. I used to have so many opinions on what was going on at the Oscars and what was going to be nominated and all that stuff. I have no idea, and I have no valid opinion. We need to start watching shit in general. Like we need to watch last year's movies. Apparently, I don't have time. I know. I can't think of when. And that's the other thing too. Like it's easier for me to put on something like Lemony Snicket and catch pieces of it, fall asleep, Mm. catch up the next time. Uh, But a movie, like if it's only an hour and a half, like I want to give it one hundred percent of my full attention. Yeah. I want. I want to really give it my attention, and I gotta. I gotta section off that time for that. Very true. Uh. Zach, who is your favorite person and why is it Malika? <laughs> Thank you, Stevers, for trying to, to get me back in good standing with Malika. Who is your favorite person? Oh, it's you, of course. You can be honest. It's honesty hour. <laughs> if you guys can see that look. <laughs> Haven't seen Moonlight yet, but I really want to. I want to see Moonlight, that's too. I heard that's at the top of my list of things to see. I feel bad that we missed the Princess Mononoke 20th anniversary. I really wanted to see that, even though I've already seen the movie. Um, I really want to see Hidden Figures, too, but um, I'm going to go with me. What's the Bollywood movie you meant, Malika? Oh, um, I will look it up. Hold on. It's really well, see, good. see, Devlin says here, Zach, if you're having issues watching past movies, why not a movie night with the chat room on weekends? Because I don't have time. Just watch and if, awesome. and if I have, <laughs> yeah, everyone wants if to I watch have awesome. time, if I have two hours of free time, I owe it to Malika before I owe it to you guys. Because I spend way too much time at this job. Way too much fucking time at this job. And I spend no time at all on my personal life. So if I have two hours, I've got to spend it with someone other than the chat room. I, when somebody last night, um, I think actually maybe Denova told me you guys were gone. I was shocked. <laughs> They're like, yeah, they went to a movie. I was like, whoa, whoa, what? They w- what Zach Zach went to a movie took Malika to a movie? I, that's well. Weird. It's usually because Malika's like, "Hey, you're being a bad boyfriend." I'm like, "You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're you know she's not wrong. She'll be like, you haven't spent any time with me in two or three weeks. We haven't talked or done anything or had a date or anything." I'm like, All right. Well, yeah, I'm a yeah. piece of shit. So let's go to a movie. <laughs> I didn't, I did not say you don't that. say that. I say that. <laughs> Do you think we could spend some time together before you leave, you know? And he's like, no. And he's like, sorry, no. And I'm like, okay. I guess I will communicate with my boyfriend through the food. 
<laughs> See what this says? See what you just said a second ago. No, I don't say anything like that. I don't say anything. And then you come out and give a perfect example of how Malika says exactly that through different words. <laughs> See this? What this says is, hey, Zach, please stop working so hard. Also start taking care of yourself. Here's some fiber. <laughs> See, I, I can read R. messages. R. You see, that's what that says. The passive aggressive <laughs> aggression, Malika, blackmail. Uh, fire dead, immersion ruined. Sorry about <laughs> your know, immersion. Right? I know, right? Hey, fire dies. Fires Shit. do die. It, it started might raining, not okay? usually look like that, but they do die, so. <laughs> Why do they stream on Saturday? Yeah, because people watch it. Did somebody just ask why do we stream on Saturday? Yes. Because a bunch of people begged us to and fucking not enough hours in the fucking week. <laughs> Rule number one, everything dies. Oi. Um Let's see. Uh uh Redo50 asked if I watched uh did you watch Westworld? I did and I'm Oh, I didn't finish it. I watched what I know. We watched some in Seattle. Westworld was very similar to Lost and some other shows for me where I'm like, I get really into it in certain aspects, and then I start to get really annoyed. And then I start paying attention and I'm just like, God, no, fuck this. God damn it. Fuck this. Yeah, fuck this. And Lucas and I had both a very similar reaction where it's just like, there's a kind of writing that really frustrates him and I both that is... Instead of just being a good storyteller, you're being a misleading storyteller to make what you're doing appear to be more interesting. Yeah. You know, and withholding information, not not because it is in the character's best interest to do so, but just to withhold information. Like, mystery built out of saying it's mysterious rather than actually being mysterious. Mm -hmm. That stuff gets on my nerves. Like, I would prefer to watch a Lynch film where Lynch is being mysterious like Blue Velvet yeah. rather than something like in the Empire where he's just being fucking weird and, and you're supposed to figure out where the mystery is and stuff like that. If only he'd cut that movie in half. I know. But it, in Westworld in that sense was frustrating to me because I liked the first couple episodes so much and then when I started figuring out so much of it was talking in circles, it reminded me a lot of uh, True Detective. A show that had so much fucking promise. The first half of the season of True Detective blew my fucking mind. And the second I realized almost everything in that show was bullshit and meant nothing. And wasn't going anywhere and was just talking in circles and was just trying to make me think it was something more than it was. I got really mad. And, I, and then it ruined the show for me. Because just like... Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, it's like... It, it, it's like... Uh, Night Nagiyama. It, it's like, it reminds me of, um, man, I'm getting so, I'm so out of touch with the proper terminology these days. I'm so out of touch. Um, but there, there's like a, there's a word for it, but I can't remember it. But it's similar to the difference between art and just pure commercial photography. You know, it's like, it's, there's one that's very slick. And it's giving you the impression of a, an, an immediate reaction and emotion mm -hmm. that's meant to be immediate and surface level, and there's not much else. And that, and that to me was like, I started seeing in Westworld, it's like there's a lot there on the surface to say, ooh, shiny, ooh, and it's HBO, so they're like, ooh, boobies. Yeah. And, uh, and then later you're like, wait, what the fuck, like, why, why just withhold those things? Why not give us what the characters would naturally give us in those moments to create the mystery around them as characters instead of... I don't know. I, it got frustrated. It got really I frustrated. Good, good night, movie. Good movie. One of my all-time favorite Bollywood movies. It's called... I'm probably going to butcher this name, but it's called Rab Ne Bana Di Jodi. And it's about this guy who gets married and his name is Surinder and he's like... Very white collar, boring, cubicle, salary man type. And he wants to be kind of like sexy and exciting for his new wife who is taking dance classes. So he disguises himself to be Raj, like the sexy guy. And he just kind of has this dual relationship with his wife. It's really funny. And it, has, it plays a lot of like homage to old Hollywood films, but they like Bollywood it. 
But what's interesting about the history of Bollywood is all of Bollywood incorporates so much of like old Hollywood history. Anyways, it's it's, it's I think you would like it. I'd probably like it. I think you yeah, would like I'd it. probably like it's it. It's a very long movie though. A um, lot of dancing. Dancing's fine with me if it's choreographed well and shot well. Like, it's, like I said, one of my favorite movies of all time is An American in Paris. It's so good. It's so good. Um, and The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. I can't... I fucking pronounce it wrong every time. If anyone knows the correct pronunciation or knows of the film I'm talking about, it's like The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. It's shot beautifully. And what Berks I love... Are all the, uh, typed it for those of you who want the title. Um, I'd be interested to see your take on Umbrellas of Sherbrooke. I think it's on Criterion Collection, but it's like oh, it? this, it is a musical, but it's so different in that sense of like, there's a frankness and the, it, it is kind of like the dialogue's just being sung, but it's not exposition and there's mm-hmm. a frankness to the way they speak. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, Prof Plump, thank you for that resub. Um, uh, all right. I, I will not be making any food on Chunky Salsa because I'm not really a cook at all. So, no. And someone asked um, about doing a Twin Peaks, like, after show type of thing for the new season of Twin Peaks. Yeah, I probably wouldn't Saw do that. Saw that a couple times. Probably wouldn't do that. Figured. Yeah. The only reason we're doing Krillin is because it's such a unique niche audience that's, yeah. like share similar correlation to what we do. Twin Peaks would be something I would do on another network. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. not here. Individual um, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm going to pull up my Twitch app, and we're going to see who we're going to raid tonight, who we're going to throw all of our love on and smother them with, with goodiness and shit. Uh, Did you see Punch Drunk Love's getting a Criterion release, by the way? Finally, Adam Sandler gets a Criterion. Deserved for that one. You know what, guys? It's been a while since, uh... <laughs> Let Malix take over. Team Malix. Yeah, Malix, keep it going. No. Good suggestions, everyone. It's not a good suggestion. Malika, right. they want us to take over. <laughs> it's not a good suggestion. All yeah, right. No, I gotta do stuff. Um, we are going to raid Tim Morag because it's been a while since we threw him some love. Cool. He's a great dude. A lot of fun. Um, what is he playing right now? He's playing. Thanks for watching, everybody. It looks like is this Kingdom Hearts? I don't know. I don't recognize these hey, games. Let me see. I don't fucking know. Mm, okay. That's a black screen, now I can't tell. Oh, it is Did a black screen. All, all right, guys, get that raid command ready for Tamor Egg. We're gonna... Oh, that's a Winnie the Pooh game. That's Winnie the Pooh. It's Kingdom music. Hearts. Yeah, it's, King- oh. it's Kingdom Hearts. Right. Yeah, he's playing Weird. Kingdom Hearts. That's awesome. All right, are you guys ready? Better for Are you guys ready? Are you ready to do this raid? You're gonna do it, and you're gonna do it right, and you're gonna make some friends, and you're gonna have fun, and you're gonna come back here tomorrow for Shy Guy Express playing Nintendo games. I don't know if you guys missed it last week. Matt is really great. He's a lot of fun. He was awesome. To have playing games, we'll have morning update, and then we're gonna have the gauntlet tomorrow night. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun day. Are you ready? Are you ready, Alex? I'm ready. Go! Go! Raid! 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 Go have fun! Bye! 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 Go have fun! Go have fun! Go have fun! Go raid! Do your thing! Go raid! (laughs) Oh my god. Are we playing... Welcome, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on over. All right, I'm going to go take this off. Yeah, 
else that is. Cool. Because we're technically still alive. Just sitting there. Awesome.